Hey y'all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we are gonna check out a brand new and absolutely jaw-dropping local fish store right here in Sydney, Australia. All right, guys, thank you for joining me on yet another episode of Parker's Reef. Now, today we're jumping in a plane and we're heading up to Sydney, Australia, because my good friends there, Billy, David and Mitch, have opened a brand new local fish store. Now, these guys, Aquaristic Australia, have been around for some time, but over the last number of months, the team have been working incredibly hard at a brand new store and... Uh, Particularly if you follow the freshwater scene, you may have seen some sneak peeks at some of the display tanks they have in this new store. And spoiler alert, these display tanks are world class. You will not find better display tanks anywhere. So when I got the opportunity to head up there, not only for the grand opening of this new store, but also to be there one day early when the team is still feverishly working away at getting all of those last minute details ready for that grand opening, I could not say no. And let me just say, fear not for all of you salty reefers out there. This store is equal parts marine as it is freshwater. So even if these incredible freshwater displays do not interest you, you have lots to see and cover in this video. So don't be clicking off just yet. Now, we're gonna go in there. We're gonna microphone up long-term staff member, Mitch, who I was able to take away from that work for about an hour so he could take us around for a fully guided tour of all of the incredible features of this new store. So I figure without any further ado, let's roll the footage and we'll talk to Mitch at Aquaristic Australia. All right, guys, I'm here with Mitch. Right before the store opening, you can see we're still boarded up here, but uh, we've managed to put a microphone on the man. He's going to take us through for a little bit of a sneak peek to us. So, um, firstly, thanks for having us. That's all right. And uh, let's head on in, man. Show us what you got. All right. All right. So, first thing when you walk in the door, we've got a nice waterfall bonsai display. This is a pretty crazy uh, display right at the door here. And... Um, this is a legit bonsai you got up here. This is actual alive and drawing water from the aquarium. Yes. Its root system comes down into the aquarium and draws water out of there. Yeah, it's actually started to already root down into the actual soil that's in the aquarium as well. That's crazy. What sort of size is this tank? Um, I think the bottom one is six foot yep. and the top one is three. Yeah, right. So got it's it. two separate tanks. Two separate and tanks just, and there's some like little bulkheads in the middle there that... Um, yeah, we've just hidden that in under some rock. Let's see if I can get footage of it. <laughs> They're pretty well hidden, but there is... Yeah, a you can of see a little bit there. from this side, yeah, but yeah. we have tried to cover it up. You've done a damn fine job. And uh, this is obviously a freshwater system um, and you've got some interesting little freshwater critters in here. I can see some shrimp. There was a little uh, pea puffer in here I saw before. Yeah, there's freshwater gobies in there as well. Yeah, crazy. Super cool system. Now, like, obviously we're here before opening. You're open tomorrow, but which will be a week ago when this video airs. This, I mean, this sort of thing doesn't happen overnight. How long has this um, store been in a process of construction? I'd say it's been pretty close to six months. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Our original, I think we started in September. Yep. Around that sort of time last year. And yeah, it's taken until now. And a lot of work it's just got to happen. So <laughs> a lot of work in fish stores. We that's can't keep waiting. That's before you go and put crazy displays like you've got here in, just just stocking the shelves and getting floors ready and having yeah. um, you know coral tanks, plant tanks ready, and then yeah, you go and put things like this crazy bonsai system in, and probably a good segue into this absolute monster that's behind you. This is a this is a tank and a half if I ever saw. Not many people can claim they've got a two-story high system that um as you can see there's still a bit of work going on the platform and the ladders up there but uh this is a living wall that's they're all live plants back there and, and the water pumps from the aquarium up through those systems and, and back into it yep it's uh i believe it's six meters wow six meters tall yeah it's not quite grown in yet but give it a few more months <laughs> the store's not even open yet man. pretty <laughs> densely <laughs> packed in Pretty densely packed in. And, and then, um, yeah, we'll have some nice exotic fish down in the bottom. There'll yeah, be crazy. two stingrays going in there. Beautiful. And there's two Saratoga in there at the moment. Awesome. Awesome. And just the like, actual water volume. This is going to be a good 
three, four thousand litres or something like that in there. It's a, it's yeah. a big system. I'd say it's something along those lines. I don't know exactly. It is a bit of a weird shape. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say it's close to around four thousand litres, I think. It, it'd have to be. I mean, it's deep. Um, it's, it's tall. It's deep. It's long. Yeah. It's a monster system. That's before. I mean, when we're talking water volume, we're not talking about the, uh, the plant wall height, but you got six metres of, uh, and probably probably three meters wide of, of plants as well. Like that's a yeah. serious, serious setup there. That would have been a uh, monster and a half to uh, uh, waterproof and set all that uh, planting system up there. Yeah, we are definitely a few trips to Bunnings, <laughs> multiple Bunnings. Local Bunnings has done well. Yeah. No, that's incredible. Well, keep the good times rolling. What else have you got to show us, Mitch? Uh, so as you make your way through the store, we have a few more freshwater setups on this side. Yes. Uh, so we've just got uh, this three foot water box here, yep, yep. and then we have a four foot paludarium, Beautiful. and then we have this small uh, glass stand set up just with some simple carpeting plants in there. Nice. My attention is drawn to this paludarium because that's, that's a pretty unique system you got going there. It's, it's pretty hectic. It's got the, the water with some fish down the bottom, and then you've got like the mister in there, and then this you actually have a pump in there as well that turns on every now and then to yeah give the full rainforest effect it gets your full water pumping through everything and this just fog of water fills that whole box up it's crazy yeah so it's just continuously dripping but then every so often it does have a misting system to imitate a rainforest yeah crazy and is this the sort of thing that you guys can guide people through setting up um in their own homes this is this is the sort of thing you guys do on a weekly basis uh, yeah, we can definitely take someone through the process. Obviously, yep. it takes some time to get something yeah. to look <laughs> this not good. It's it out of the box and look probably like not going to look like that on your first attempt, but <laughs> it is part of the hobby. And of you course. do, yeah, over time you do get better at it. So yeah, it's definitely yep. something we can help out with. I mean, I'm a salty old reefer and I don't know the first thing about uh, tanks without any salt in them, but I imagine plants like this have fairly special care requirements that um generally speaking you you're looking for plants that love moisture yep. because the whole thing is just constantly high yep. humidity so i think that's probably where people would go wrong if you put plants in there that don't like that yes. they're just going to get drowned and then they just wither away so it's not too bad like you get a lot of mosses you do have a lot of like nice little plants like boosts which yep. can grow in and out of water so yeah, right, right. you can it's sort of prop them up around in certain areas too. So you get that real connected feeling from you know beneath the water surface to above. Yeah. Yeah, super cool. And then I notice you've got, and we can talk about a couple of these marine displays we've got here. We've got this, uh, this is a water box? No, Red Sea system yeah, here. Yeah, four foot Red Sea. Yeah, four foot Red Sea. Man, the first thing I notice is the mangroves you got growing here. Yeah, so for this one, we really wanted to try and create a transition from the planted wall into a reef system yes, yes. so that's why we went with the mangroves and the drop-off sort of feel yeah, like so it, it sort of allows you to go from one aspect to the other yeah yeah from quite the river smoothly. to the ocean I yeah love it. so hopefully they grow in quite densely up there and that'll help with that definitely um, and then we just got a few very sort of simple corals in there nothing too crazy yep, yep. most of these corals are not too demanding yeah and yeah. then yeah there's there is seahorses in there. They don't really want to come out right now, but <laughs> it's yeah. all good. We are <laughs> late into the uh, evening, the uh, day before grand opening. So there's still a absolute hive of activity happening here. And um, yeah, the seahorses may have uh, called it at night, but uh, there is a long nose uh, butterfly in there just uh, pecking through things, keeping it all honest. But uh, yeah. I do like some of the, the leathers up there and the gorgs on there. This one really got nice extension going on in there. Looks a treat, and yeah, there's a few pretty, uh, pretty nice recorder here and a nice redactus in there. Super cool, but yeah, well, actually, I just noticed the clams, and there's yeah, there's one that of the seahorse one there. seahorse. <laughs> just keeping an eye on the clams for us, but uh, yeah, the clams and the uh, the mango is probably the, the the real star of the show on that system. And then you move on to this big peninsula behind the counter there, which is pretty yeah. cool. So counter still in progress, but that will be the backdrop for our counter. So we've just got a whole bunch of SBS and then there's, I think there's four or five different types of Antheas in there. Yeah, I was looking at the Antheas in there before. You've got uh, purple queens, you've got uh, lorries, there's sunburst, there's uh, borbonius, uh, disbars, so many different types of Antheas in there yeah. and uh, they look super cool. Um, all, all in there doing their thing and um, that 
that massive scape there, that's um that's that's ambitious. <laughs> yeah, so that that was created using Marco Rock. Yep. So yeah, you can do a lot of fun stuff with that. <laughs> it it is it is a bit of a process and cleaning it is gonna be a bit sketchy. You be a bit worried to bump that, but yeah. It's it's held up the whole time. That's probably I think that was the first scape that we did in the shop, so yep. that's held up the longest. Stood the test of time. Yeah. And yeah, the lights are starting to dim on that system now, but um yeah, it's it makes a heck of a backdrop right behind the counter here and it allows you still to see through into the wet room but uh, still give a nice bit of eye candy I guess to yeah. take advantage of which well, is Well you can see it from both sides as well. So it does yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And there's gear on that that we'll have a look at when we get through to there. And we'll just pan back across because you've got this pretty intense little wall of uh, various nanos along here, which there's some crazy stuff going on in here. You've got uh, this system tripped me out for quite a while. I could not work out how that cave was glowing from underneath. And then, you know, sometimes it's the most obvious thing. Yeah. There's a light under there. <laughs> yeah, we've propped a little uh, Chihiro Z light under there. It looks super cool though. It gives a real different perspective to a tank where, yeah, you've got the rocket coming out of the tank and then it's lit from underneath. I mean, it's lit from above as well, but just the, uh, the shadows and angles of light is something pretty spectacular on that. Yeah, so we've got this, the whole section is pretty much just nanos. Yeah. And like a lot of people around this area, they live in apartments. Not everyone can fit a six foot fish tank of in their course. apartment, but of course. you can easily fit something like this on your desk or in your kitchen or something like that. So it's just a bit of inspiration for people. This one in particular intrigues me. There's more volume of rock in that system than there is of water. I mean, it's probably got maybe a liter and a half of water in it. Yeah, if that. <laughs> um, that one's not really great for fish, but it is still like a nice bit of moving art that you could have Absolutely. in the home. Yeah, but I mean, you've still got some plants in there and um, it's, it's an intriguing system. And there's, there's some pretty cool things. This one up here that's sealed up. Um, yeah, so that's got a carnivorous plant in there. Yeah, wow. I'm not so, yeah, sure. Some super exotic stuff going on in there. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, the, the displays keep going all sorts of different styles. And um, yeah, we're still obviously in setup phase, but there's lots and lots of things to uh, pique people's interest in different styles of aquariums yeah, and well, sizes. Just uh, pretty much every shape and size, just to give people the idea, like you can always find something that will fit the space you have. It's yeah. just about being creative with it. Absolutely. And none of these, none of these don't look world-class. They're, they're incredible. So. It, it, even like I said before, I'm, I'm an old salty reefer, but uh, when I see things like this, it's, uh, it's inspirational. And um, yeah, I imagine they're going to be very popular right at the point of sale too. I mean, you come to the, yeah. the counter here and while you're uh, getting served, you just look over your shoulder and see these crazy setups, which is pretty cool. But uh, we need to keep rolling. We've got dry goods up this way. So yep. lots, to, um, lots of different brands, lots of different products. Shelves still getting stocked, but uh, plenty plenty there so all your foods um, from a number of different brands you get some of your different uh, feeder options out there from like your nori clips and feeder rings um, you've got some of the uh, treatments there from sea chem diamax tropical ocean nutrition all sorts of uh, aquaforest sarah and then you move on to your shrimp king stuff so you've got all of your uh, shrimp feeders as well and then you come on to some of your marine specific supplements from uh, coral essentials triton great range of triton i must say and for those who don't know, this is the, brick, the new bricks and mortar store that sits in front of uh, Aquaristic Online, the uh, yes. quite famous uh, uh, aquarium retail store online here in Australia. So you guys have got a huge range, obviously, both in store and also online. So Yeah, pretty much everything we sell in the shop other than livestock, we also sell it's online. online, yeah. 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 So yeah, it's, there's, there's no shortage of products in here. And yeah, the wall keeps on going all the way along here. You move on to some of your more, I was gonna say fresh water, but no, we've got some fresh water things up here, but then we come down to some Red Sea products here, some of the aquaforest there. Dr. Tim's obviously covers both sides. Onto your Vugles, onto your APIs, Continuum. It just doesn't end. They just keep going down and down. You can see the team are still stacking shelves now to make sure everything's absolutely chock-a-block for tomorrow. Then you've got uh, some canister filters here. You've got, uh, I can see some like HANA checkers and test kits and things along there. And then uh, up this way, we've got a freezer for foods, obviously ornaments, uh, breeding logs. Uh, you've got poly filters and other types of uh, filters. And then some of your uh, 
bacterial housing, so from Ciparax through to uh, your biospheres, different products like that, through to your uh, filter socks, up to the new ITC MRAC range of products up there. Lots and lots. You even got, uh, oh, this is an interesting little section, all of the uh, calibration fluids here, super, super handy, even uh, pH probe cleaning solution. Nice nifty little items that uh, you don't always see in the aquarium stores, so yeah, nicely done. Well, because we run both of them pretty much out of the same operation, Makes we kind of have to have everything. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Got a very complete web store, so you may as well have it on the shelf as well. Last yeah, thing exactly. Do is have someone come in the store and then you send them home to jump on their computer when yeah. you want them to be able to grab it off the shelf and go home and get stuck into it. Yeah, pretty much. We always try to keep a good stock of spare parts and things like that. We always have the spare impellers, yeah, that's, filter that's, cartridges. That's impressive too because, yeah, it, it's more often than not when you're chasing, you know, an impeller for something that you've got to order it in and wait so long for it when... Let's be real, when a product breaks in your aquarium, yeah. you kind of want it fixed right away. Yeah, especially if it's something <laughs> you're relying on to keep everything exactly, alive. Exactly, yeah. It's not really feasible to say, oh, cool, yeah, order one in for me, I'll pick it up in a fortnight. Yeah. You got the spare parts there on the shelf ready to go, which is um, super cool. This is an interesting part. Oh, it's radian, a radion cable, radian yeah. Radian extension cable. Man, I didn't even know they made those. <laughs> it's pretty long to begin with, but I suppose you never know where you're going to end up plugging it in. So, you never yeah. know interesting stuff yeah that's super cool now you've got even more dry goods upstairs we do you've got a second story believe it or not and then we've got a whole wet room which we'll we'll get onto last because there's yeah, even more to cover in there all right so we're up onto the second uh level which is right where you can see the top of the uh the plant wall over there in the paludarium which is pretty cool but you've got even more dry goods up here this is the stuff that's a little less frequently accessed yeah so up here is a lot of our sort of automation stuff so you've got a lot of doses auto top offs your, your pumps air pumps filters that sort of stuff yeah 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 and yeah great range up here too from aquamedic dimax red sea obviously itc all the Red Sea Reef doses, their Reef ATO, the new products there. You got the uh, Auto Aqua Gear from their top offs, their uh, water changes, Versa dosing pumps. You even got some Neptune uh, Apex gear down there, the Kamoa X1 Pro T2s, all of your light mounts and things over there, plus, you know, some big castles and stuff there. And then there's even more. <laughs> we can actually get around there. We can, yes. So we've got this nice Reef Factory display as well with all their bits and pieces full range of uh, reef factory there including fresh delivery of the uh, smart testers which are a hotly uh, contested item so there's a couple here on the shelf ready to go and then yeah you've got more you've got tunzi pumps siche pumps a good range of siches we've got eheim filters aquamedic this from their tiny through to their much larger wave makers even aquamedic uh, ozones You've got uh, Vortex Galore, Nero's, heaps and heaps. You've even got a range of the uh, 3D printed uh, pump guards there. Yep, so we've uh, collaborated with uh, FM Reefing who prints a lot of this stuff out for us. Yeah, so, awesome. yeah. It's got NEM guards there for the wave makers as well. Yeah, then you've got a lot guys. of light shades, yeah, different yeah. sort of driver brackets, yep, yep. all sorts of stuff. Yeah, crazy good. More of the refactory pumps. Some uh, Chihirios lights here. Lots and lots of stuff to cover. And then I'll make sure I don't uh, trip over because we're still stocking the shelves here. But yeah, plenty of goods and uh, even more to come. Yeah, Clarity then... filters up there. Full range of the uh, Reef Pure RO parts and systems. Everything one could want. But uh, it's probably time we jump down into the uh, wet room and check out what's going on in there. Can show you in here. Yeah, okay, So cool. this is our escaping room. Ah, yes. So this is where all of our aquascaping stuff will be both reef and freshwater. Yeah, awesome. So you've got all your reefing rocks over there and yes. then still a bit of a mess, but we're getting there. You got a lot of rock and wood. And then we've just got like a nice big tank to sort of give people an idea. Not sure what's happening with that yet. <laughs> Don't know if we're gonna scape it or if we're gonna use it as a demo for people to sort of yeah, get awesome. an idea of what it would look like in their tank. Awesome. Got the table there for people to do some dry scapes on. Yeah, so you can map out the size of your tank and get some rocks and get creative and yeah great space to sort of come up here it's a little bit uh removed from the rest of the store almost so you can sort of come yeah. up here and just focus get in the zone and well yeah. we did um we did notice the way we had it all set up at the old shop a lot of the time 
this was sort of in the way. Yep. So you'd have people hoarding logs and rocks yeah, and yeah, then yeah. no one can get past. So this just allows that they can spend as much time as they want up here. They can take their time and take they're not time. in anyone's way. So yeah, perfect. We also do have a item elevator. So yeah, <laughs> super handy. So you, you won't have to, to carry 50 kilos of rock downstairs <laughs> on your own. <laughs> Once you've picked out your scape, you can load it into a box and put it into the elevator there, which is not an elevator for people, but it's a uh, service elevator for items. You can see there's plenty of rock that's been brought up and uh, put on the shelves here. The Java Reef Rock, very, very popular, is now loaded up there. But uh, yeah, once you've built your scape, you can, uh, or got all your items, you can pop it in the elevator and catch it downstairs. All right, we'll go check out some livestock. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so here we just have four big planted tanks. So that's going to be all the plants we'll be selling. Um, I also believe in the future we will also be setting up a propagation tank to start growing yeah, right. and cutting our own plants too. But for and now, that works. I mean, I assume it would the same way corals work with plants. You can you can cut a piece off them, get yeah. them settled, and they grow out just like a, a, an above water plant works, I guess. Yeah. So most plant, well, it depends on the plant, but like all of your stem plants, you could just cut that in half, yep. stick it back in the ground, it'll shoot roots out of it. So yep. Lo yep. some are a lot easier than others. Sure. You have stuff like crinum here. That one won't do that. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> that yep, one's yep. a bit harder to get that to happen. But yeah. 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 Um, and then if you want to go this way, yeah, let's we do have a, a moss rack here. So these, this will be all of our moss. These tanks, I absolutely love these because um, they're like literally three inches tall. Yeah, um, we've pretty much <laughs> got everything custom built for very purpose specific things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that's uh, just purely built to have enough water to keep the moss wet, but not a ridiculous, like having it in there would be yeah, it'd be quite a it'd waste, be a waste of, of space. And like I mean, it's taking up prime real estate for the bigger plants. We're in a city, Sydney here, so yes. you know, real estate's uh, it's pretty hot. Um, so we only want to take up as much room as possible for the moss, and that does it really ingeniously. It's quite uh, quite clever. Yeah, and then going down further, we've got our fighting fish bay. Yeah, betas, nice. betas, whatever you want to call them. Definitely, <laughs> good rack of uh, betas there, and. Yeah, this system's all plumbed in so that they get constant feed of water and overflows back into a sump and gets filtered and back up to them, keep all those betas as healthy as possible. And um, yeah, there's always a great option of uh, colors and patterns and just different uh, tail shapes and things on betas. I'm always yeah. amazed by them. There's, they're, they're a fish that really comes up crazy nice under a uh, good photograph and um, probably also helped by the fact that they're pretty still. They don't uh, yeah, dump don't. out on you. <laughs> They don't move around all that often. <laughs> yeah, they are very good beginner fish. And like you said, they come in like every color you can think of. So definitely, there's plenty of options there. Um, did you want to continue around or do you want to check out the gear we've got well, on the tank? While we're here, we should have a quick look at this uh, wall here that um, Jared's been working away on here. This is a reef factory wall. So you can actually see the uh, brand new smart tester in the midst of a test there or calibration. and. Uh, base pump, you got thermo control, the salinity guardian pH probe still to be calibrated in, KH keeper just in the process of calibrating. In fact, you can see the uh, scales out here now, but uh, really nifty little wall set up there to showcase the full range of products. And uh, it's all keeping uh, this system here ticking away. And uh, Jared's just here setting up the uh, tablet, which is gonna be mounted up on that wall, display the status of everything, which uh, you can see the uh, Velcro up there, so a really cool way to showcase all of the uh, reef factory products and how they work, which is very, very nice. All right, so continuing along, uh, this will b predominantly be discus, I believe. Yes. So we've got a few larger ones up there and then some of your smaller variety down here. We haven't quite filled it in yet, but <laughs> it's that'll there. happen in time. It's getting there. And then further around the corner, you've got a whole bunch of different guppies. Guppies are also another really good starter fish that also come in a variety of different colors. So that's another easy, nice, small fish that you can start off with. When you see a number of brightly colored, beautiful guppies like this, they're, they're hard not to fall in love with. They're, yeah. They're a pretty fish. Well, yeah, if you have a lot of viewers coming from marine wanting to get something in fresh water, a lot of the freshwater fish tend to be a lot duller in color, but For you sure. do still have the nice bright ones that exist too. Bright guppies, they're not expensive. Easy no, to not care at all. Got pretty easy care requirements. And yeah, if you could pick up a marine fish with red that vibrant, 
you'd be paying a few more dollars than these guys cost. Yeah, they average probably around twelve dollars. Yeah, <laughs> so a bit that's cheaper much, than a marine fish. That's what the bag cost on a marine fish. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then this side we've got a shrimp display. Yeah, nice. So we've got a few little crystal reds in there at the moment and then there's a mixture of other things in that bottom row. Um, and then, yeah, again, these are custom made. So that front yeah. area is left empty so yes. that we can just feed them quite easily oh, nice. without disturbing the soil. Very clever. So that's that side. Then you just got a few more of your freshwater fish. We've got a lot of variety going on at the moment. We always try to keep a decent variety of fish happening. So yes. Plenty of freshwater fish there, and I know there is some pretty crazy freshwater filtration that you guys run here. We'll, we'll cover that in a minute yeah, once we we'll get around check there. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the freshwater filtration is something you guys take very serious. You want your livestock to be absolutely as healthy as it possibly can be, and um, you've gone to extreme lengths to make sure that happens. Yeah, well, well, we'll have a look at it soon, but we did maybe go a little overkill, but <laughs> better to be sure. Trust me, there's no such thing as overkill. We love all the electronics and gear in this uh, this channel. So yeah, looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, now that we've got the space to do that sort of stuff, we definitely wanted to make sure we're on top of it. Definitely. You got a few of your potted plants over here. Yes. Um, so you got a pretty good variety in yeah, that yeah. as well. Um, really nicely displayed too. I mean, obviously we're still doing some uh, fit out here, but um, the way that these uh, yeah, sort of semi-submerged, these guys have got their root system under the water and the leaves up above it. And these guys are just just surfacing on there. It's a really cool way to just have the plants available and have them displayed. Yeah. Ah, so then yeah, we just, this whole wall is pretty much gonna continue on as freshwater <laughs> fish. Lots of freshwater fish. Yeah, so just lots of different variety, all different sizes. Yep, yep. Uh, then we've got your goldfish section here as well. There's a few funky eels up there, something exotic for the opening day. I did see some of these guys. Yeah, yeah. they're a strange looking eel. They don't want to come out right now, but uh, I'll they, be sure to get some footage of them at some stage. And yeah, they're, did, did I hear correctly, they're a devil eel or something like that? Or I'm not 100% sure on the name. This is honestly the first time I've seen them. Okay, so. that exotic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was not just but me then. <laughs> we did want to get some fun stuff to show people, like these are things we are capable of getting. Yes. We're not going to have them all the time, but yeah. we can get can some get fun stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Super, super cool. Um, we might check out the filter room while we're here. Yeah, definitely. So in this side, so in here we have our six UV sterilizers, which are pretty much just blasting any parasites that could be coming through. Um, you can never be too safe, so we went overkill. This is a crazy amount of UV, dude. Oh, let's have a look. I wonder if we'll tell us on it. Do you know what sort of wattage each one of these units is? Um, I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it. <laughs> I didn't have too much to do with putting it in there. I mean, I mounted them to the wall, but that's as much as I had to do with it. They are big UVs, and I do love these ballasts that have the hours of lamp usage and things on there. Crazy, crazy nice system. And that's only the beginning of what you guys are doing for uh, fish health in this system, because you've got yep. even more in here, yeah? Yes, so in this room, we're running a massive, I believe it's a K2 filter. Yeah, nice. So that is pretty much pumping all of our fresh water uh, systems through that. Yep. And we just have this two meter tall protein skimmer which hasn't been hooked up yet but that will just to be that'll just be to help disperse the ozone this i believe is a freshwater protein skimmer which is going to be used just to accommodate ozone on the freshwater system i know as far as i know it's definitely for ozone yes. i don't know whether it's for marine or freshwater yet but yeah that is to help break up the ozone <laughs> crazy and there's big ozone unit there epic amount of uh, filtration to ensure the fish health is as perfect as it possibly can be. Yeah, we can actually duck around to the other side at some point if you want to see the filter and where all the water actually ends up. No but problem. now, did you want to continue down Let's here? Let's do that. All okay, right. so this will be our main packing table where we'll be packing all of our fish and yes. corals. Uh, we will also be cutting corals. So that station's pretty much designed. It's a bit of a mess now, but that's what it will function <laughs> as once we're ready to go. So you've got the sink over there. We will have a bandsaw as well to help yeah, cut crazy. up corals. That'll be super handy when, uh, yeah, you're used to working in tight, confined spaces. Yeah. You've got a nice wet area to work with. And yeah, definitely. A nice fish sink. You don't have to worry about the water going everywhere. Definitely. 
So up here we have our three main coral selling tanks. So yeah. this will be predominantly full of frags. So and we got quite a decent range. If you've seen any of our Facebook posts in the last few days, I think we picked something like 24 boxes up from the airport. <laughs> that was fun. No shortage of pieces in there. And these, these three marine systems are all lit by these uh, Delua Ulu Magic X4 lights, a huge array of them lighting up this tank here. It looks super, super cool and um, yeah, epic to see them in person. Yep. I don't know if we went a bit crazy with that as well, but... <laughs> Good go to big. go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is just another nano tank that we'll be setting up as a display as well. It's not full yet, as you can see. Uh, then this one here will be our blackworm setup. Yeah, cool. So we will actually have live blackworms live going blackworms. through there, hooked up to a chiller to keep them cold. Crazy cool. Live longer if you keep them cool, so yeah. Definitely. Always good, and yeah, the corals just keep going. I mean, in this one three meter long system, there would be, I don't know, rough guess, 400 corals in there, uh, maybe more. In fact, look at the density of the tiles, probably more, probably, probably 800 pieces yeah, in bit, there. It's a bit crazy. <laughs> so there's a lot of pieces in there, and then, into the middle system here. So you got a bit larger, a few larger pieces here, so not everything's frags, but yeah, we've still got sort of your, just a decent array of different corals up here. We have planned it in a way, so your sort of smaller, easier stuff to handle will be on that end, yep. um, because it's further away from the light, yep. and then it'll be your SPS down the end where it's closer to the light. And yeah, this system here, we've got Leathers, we've got heliofungias, clove polyps, there's SBS, there's some other soft corals. You move on to uh, torches, you've got uh, hammers, you've got uh, lobos, symphilias, acans, gonies, fungias, trachophilias, heaps and heaps of coral. And that's only one of the three systems. Then you've got overflow. You've so this, more. yeah, so this side is where we're actually going to plan to grow the corals. Yep. So we'll then cut them from here to transfer into Cellus Frags. Okay, yeah, nice. So we have six setups for that. Uh, they're not as big as these tanks, but yeah, that will be predominantly to grow out our own corals. It's still six big tanks. Yes. <laughs> I mean, these are, what are these? These are going to be... Uh, I think they're five meters. These are eight, I believe. Yeah, right, right. So or there's... Six. Six or eight. <laughs> plenty of uh, space for corals so no shortage there i know you guys have got a, a huge following in the uh, in the freshwater world and understandably when you've got tanks and scapes like we saw in the other room but uh, it's definitely not a freshwater only store you've got eaves of yeah. marine stuff here yeah definitely um then further down this one doesn't have egg crate in it at all yet we have a epaulette shark in there uh, there's a big box fish, so we've just put some of the larger fish that wouldn't do too well in that system over there. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure if they're staying in there or if that's just another example of just trying to show you guys what sort of stuff we can get in if people are ever after those sorts of rarer to find items. Definitely. We can source them. A luxury you have in the new store with all of these tanks to work with. Yeah, well that's another bonus as well. Like we have these large tanks where you could put something like an epaulette shark as well and For it can sure. quite comfortably hide away in there instead of being exposed in one of those yeah, displays over definitely, there. Definitely. And then um, over here you've got some uh, marine fish. Yeah, so we'll wrap around and have a look at that. Sure thing. Oh, and yeah, we just got some oddball clowns that came in earlier today as well. They're all yeah, hanging out together. Clowns from a local breeder, I believe. Yeah, Sydney yeah. breeder. Yeah, uh, we've got cool. a few, don't know where they've put them. We did have some other designer clowns yeah, somewhere. I, I don't know where they've gone. <laughs> I did see them over there. They've been, oh, they'll be all on these tanks along. Oh, here. there you go. But they've been uh, grouped together, and yeah, there's some. These guys literally just come out of the bag, so they're uh, just acclimating in. But um, yeah, super, super cool to have such a short supply chain. You get someone breeding them uh, at their facility in, in here in Sydney and uh, yeah. can bring them straight in, which is always handy. Yeah, so then we also have. Decent range of your reef fish as well. Yeah, yeah. Everything from dwarf angels, tangs, rasses, anthias. Uh, we've got some butterflies, other clownfish, variety of damsels. Beautiful, lots of fish there to work with. And there's even more marine items up along yes, here. Yes, and then this is the last of the livestock. So this is our invert rack. And we've done the same thing here where we've used that empty space at the front so that we can put food in, but 
<laughs> marine inverts being marine inverts, they turn it into what they want. <laughs> you can tell where the food goes because, like, look at this. Yeah, they're here. all hoarding the front <laughs> like, area. They just pile on in there, and uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, the strongest are the best. <laughs> the strongest have just gone stacks on for where the where the food is. But uh, yeah. works a treat. You guys have got yeah, great. You've got some urchins. You got obviously various types of uh, of uh, snails. You've got uh, red line cleaner shrimp. The coral banded shrimp, starfish, even got these uh, uh, feather. That's called bristle starfish? Bristle or starfish? Feather? Yep, yep. I don't know, the marine world likes to give multiple names to the same thing, <laughs> exactly. so we'll probably both right there. We also have these uh, Watchman Gobi shrimp pairs as yeah, well. Yeah, super cool. They're usually a bit trickier to come by, but we Definitely. managed to get our hands on some for the opening, so Perfect. that's cool to have. This one up here's already actually started to oh, they've actually dig his little, dig yeah, his little cave working together there. Doing their symbiotic relationship, super, super cool. So then this is hiding away in the back. Um, room echoes a little bit, so sorry about that. Uh, so we've got the two sumps down here. One of them's hooked up to that mother colony tank where we're going to propagate from, and then the other one's hooked up to the actual selling tanks. Yes. That big tub down there is for the freshwater system, so yeah. you can actually come down if you want sure, to have a look. Sure. It might get a bit noisy in here, but that's why it's secluded off in this little <laughs> corner. So yeah, that's just another part of that huge filtration going into our freshwater, and then we have all of our RO units. Yeah. Yep beast of an RO machine that's I think it does a thousand thousand liters a day you know when your RO <laughs> unit has got plumbing this size going in and yeah. out of it that it's uh it's gonna flow a bit of water that's uh pretty yeah. serious we haven't quite hooked up doses yet but that'll all get it hooked up to that main tank to help keep the corals healthy as well keep it all in check yeah amazing all right well so that's pretty much the shop tour I appreciate you taking the time I know today is a pretty hectic day um we're literally down to uh, hours, if not minutes, before uh, the opening tomorrow. And I um, appreciate you taking the time to uh, take us through where the shop's at, because I know tomorrow I'll, lucky to get, uh, I'll be lucky to get two words in. You guys are going to be pretty hectic. Yeah, so. expecting a pretty full house tomorrow. <laughs> Definitely. And we'll be sure to cover heaps of footage of that tomorrow, so everyone uh, watching at home can check it out there. But um, for everyone else, if you can't get in store, we're on, uh, well, if you can get in store, we're on uh, is it 547? 657. 657, I was yeah. close. 657 <laughs> Botany Road here in uh, Sydney. And for those who can't, jump online, support these guys at aquaristiconline.com.au. Yes. Perfect. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And within a very few short hours, the day was here. The grand opening had come. And you can see here, there is no more Australian way to celebrate a local fish store opening than with a monster barbecue being cooked up. And you can see here, the punters turned out in droves. The store was jam packed the entire day. The business hours were actually 11 to four, but the store itself was packed from 11 to five. Lots of people in there picking up dry goods, picking up tanks, picking up corals, picking up fish, and of course, picking up plants. So really, really cool to see. I do love when I see a local fish store like this put in a huge amount of effort. It is really, really cool to see the number of people come in and support them because let's be honest, the local fish store is the absolute cornerstone of our hobby. And uh, without them, it all goes away really, really quickly. And it's cool to see a place like this, Aquaristic, that have a huge online presence, back that up with an incredible bricks and mortar store and then to have all of these people come in and support it is just incredible all right guys there you have it that is the tour of that brand new jaw dropping store aquaristic australia i've got to say a huge shout out to billy david mitch and all of the crew at aquaristic australia you've done an incredible job building that store the freshwater displays as i touched on in the intro i have to say I'm not a freshwater guy, but they absolutely made my jaw drop. They have to be world-class. Two-story high paludariums, that bonsai waterfall tank, all of those little nano display tanks. I know just how difficult it is to one, open a local fish store in today's climate, but two, have a display tank in that local fish store. You guys have gone above and beyond and have multiple, multiple display tanks of both freshwater and marine covering all sorts of different biotopes, which is really, really cool to see. Now, for anyone that is remotely in the area, I do highly encourage you to head on in. It is in Botany Road in Sydney, and you'll find all of the details down here on where to find this store. But for the rest of us who are not fortunate enough to have this beautiful store in their backyard, fear not, Aquaristic Australia also operate 
Aquaristic Online, which is one of Australia's largest local fish store websites, having the best prices in Australia and a massive, massive range of products, as you would have saw in the video today. So if you're unable to make it in store, please do support those who support the channel, jump on their website and pick yourself up an absolute bargain or one of those items that you rarely see because their uh, range and pricing is just that good. Now, I will wrap things up there. However, if you do have any questions, comments, feedback, feel free to pop it in the comment section down below. I do personally reply to each and every comment there, so it is the best way to get hold of me. And I do know the Acoristic team do happen to pour over those comments a little bit as well, so you may even get an answer directly from the horse's mouth itself. But um, other than that, guys, I think I will wrap things up. I've got some cool automation videos to come up over the next couple of days and weeks, which uh, you don't want to miss out on because uh, it's an ever-evolving space, and I'm really looking forward to bringing those videos to you. But uh, Till then, stay safe, keep briefing guys, have a good one, bye.